Okay, so we are called the Hare Krishnas because our main slogan, our main prayer, and what we are famous for is what's behind me, the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. Maha means the great, and mantra, that which delivers the mind out of material consciousness onto the spiritual plane. And there are three seeds of this Maha Mantra, Hare, Krishna, and Rama. Hare is the feminine aspect of the absolute truth. So in this Maha Mantra, the feminine aspect of the absolute truth appears eight times. Then there are also eight masculine names broken out into two, Krishna and Rama, for each. So we have 16 words, three what we call seed vibrations, and altogether 32 syllables. So why is it called Maha Mantra? Because in the scriptures, there are literally thousands of such spiritual transcendental sound vibrations. But this one is the best, the greatest, the Maha Mantra. And what is very special about this Maha Mantra, different from all the other mantras, is that there is no hard and fast rule for chanting this Maha Mantra. In other mantras, there is a consideration of time, place, and circumstance. But in the Maha Mantra, there are no considerations. Anyone can chant at any time, any situation, clean or unclean, morning, noon, night, whenever. So I'm gonna give you a demonstration of our world famous Hare Krishna chanting. If we were there in your classroom, I would ask you to get up out of your seats and dance, but, I mean, you can still get out of your seats and dance, but I can't show you the step. But if you feel like dancing, feel free, the teachers will give you extra credit if you get up and dance. But you should sing along with me. I will sing, <coughs> the famous Hare Krishna tune, which became famous in 1966 and was a number one record in England in 1967. So here is by the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. Do you hear the drum? Yes? Okay. Hare Krishna Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Sing with me. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. That's good. Get up and dance. Very good. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. He's got the beat. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama. Hare Hare. Bryce, you got to get your students up out of their seats. Very good, Mindy's class. We need more dancers. Any dance move, break a, break a sweat. Hot. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama. Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Okay, that's the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. Hare Krishna. 
Hare Krishna. So, Jiva, living entity, is part and parcel of God. God is all spiritual. So, the Jiva, the individual living entity, has all the qualities of Krishna, but to a minute degree. God is great, and the living entity is infinitesimal. So the best analogy I like to use is the example of the sun and the sunshine. The sunshine cannot exist independent of the sun. Neither is the sunshine the source of the sun. So man does not create God. God already exists. So the individual jiva, the living entity or the soul, being all spiritual, is like the sun ray, whereas God himself is actually the blazing sun or blazing fire. Now remember, the sun ray cannot exist independent of the sun and the sun ray uh, cannot create the sun, cannot live independent and cannot create it. So the origin is the sun planet itself. Similarly, God, Ishwara, he is the original source of everything. In the Bhagavad Gita, as you see the picture behind me, of Krishna and the man with the arrow, Arjuna. Krishna explains to Arjuna that all energies come from him. He is the absolute truth. This is, Krishna says, there is no truth superior to me. So all subsequent truths or relative truths come from Krishna, the speaker of Bhagavad Gita just as the sun gives off so many energies in the terms of heat and light. So the living entity is one of the energies of God. God has two other categories, spiritual energies and the material energy. This is also explained in Bhagavad Gita. Now the question arises, what is the purpose of the living entity? What is the function of jiva? And the best example is the limbs of your body. Your different limbs are meant to serve the whole body. So in the same way, all living spirit soul jivas are parts and parcels of God and the relationship is master and servant. Since God is all-powerful, omniscient, omnipotent, since he's the source of everything, material or spiritual, the function of the living entity, the part and parcel, is to love and serve God or Krishna. That is our function, to love and serve God. But at the same time, there is one final snatch. That's called free will. God does not force us to love him and serve him. If we refuse or we still want to be independent of God, then we live in the material realm where we can try to imitate God. But if we surrender, if we voluntarily choose to love and serve God, then you can enter the kingdom of God, the spiritual world. I could go on for another two hours, but I will defer now to Archita and Rukmini.